Hey everyone, my name is Mini Assassin, and we're back to the pacifist challenges, this time in Pokemon White. The rules are the same as always, but you can find the full rule set in the description. Right away, I picked Snivy as our starter, since he gets access to Leech Seed, as well as having a more defensive stat spread. I name him Gandhi. Upon leaving Nuvema Town, I catch a Patrat named Mason and a Lillipup named Thomas. Then we come across our first major hurdle. In order to progress past Accumula Town, N must be defeated. There is no way that a Patrat and a Lillipup can defeat a level 7 Purloin without attacking, regardless of what starter helps them. See, in Generation 5, the earliest access we have to Growl is a Purloin, which can't be caught until we beat N. Without a way to lower the opponent's attack stat, we can't even defeat a wild Pokemon, let alone N's Purloin. But there is a way around this. Egg moves. Egg moves are normally obtained by breeding in the daycare, which we don't have access to yet, but I asked my uncle who works at Nintendo to send me a special Lillipup that knows the move Charm. Charm is one of Lillipup's egg moves, and it reduces the attack of an opponent by two stages. Now that we can lower the opponent's attack, we can easily deplete wild Pokemon of their power points, forcing them to use Struggle and take themselves out, getting us a whole five experience per team member? Yeah, I'm not dealing with this. Pardon me a moment. Hey, could you send me some rare candies real quick? I know you have them. Yeah, yeah, I know it's cheating, but we don't have to tell anyone. Well, I wouldn't be so inclined to do this if you didn't butcher the experience system in Generation 5. Thanks, you're the best. Alright, so I'm not actually supposed to tell you this, but uh, my uncle got us some rare candies, so now we can ignore the worst part of every challenge, grinding. Rest assured, I won't use them willy-nilly since we have level caps. Leveling up with candies will also reduce the number of EVs our team has, meaning our stats will be lower than in a normal playthrough. Turns out, being able to lower the opponent's damage output is incredibly crucial, since it turned an unwinnable battle into an easy victory without even touching our levels. Moving on to Route 2, we catch a Purloin named Freeman, and we need to level up to level 10 in order to learn Sand Attack so we can get past Bianca and Charon. Thanks to early game movesets actually being decent for the first time, they do too much damage without the mischance. Sand Attack doesn't carry us for very long though, since soon enough we run into a Gym Trainer who has a Patrat with the ability Keen Eye, preventing accuracy loss. The only other thing we can do is battle Youngster Joey. No, not that one, to get the Gift Pan Pour from the Dream Yard, but he also has a Keen Eye Patrat. Even at the level cap of 14, we stand no chance against these random trainers who aren't even supposed to be noteworthy. I call up my uncle again and ask him to teach Gandhi Leech Seed, just to get past the gym trainer. Youngster Joey will be ignored, since he's entirely optional. I also won't be using Leech Seed in the gym battle against Chili. Speaking of Chili, his Lillipup goes down, but not before taking out Freeman and moderately damaging Mason. Despite minimizing his accuracy, Pantsir gets lucky and destroys our team with a few incinerates once his special attack is maxed out. This kept happening, so eventually I caved and asked my uncle for a final favor. Teach Gandhi his egg move, Captivate. Captivate is a move that lowers the opponent's special attack by two stages, but only works if the user and opponent are opposite genders. Since Chili's Pantsir is male, this will only work if Gandhi is female. With the now transgender Gandhi, we can lower Pantsir's special attack, allowing her to hang on from an incinerate and stall Pantsir into using Struggle to take himself out. Since the level cap now enables us to use Leech Seed, Charon is a piece of cake. Even with an Orenberry, Tepig can't do much other than burn Freeman, thanks to Captivate neutering his damage output. He does land a nasty critical hit to nearly take Freeman out, though. Porloin can't even outdamage Leech Seed healing thanks to Thomas's charm. This does mark the end of my use of Sand Attack, though, since I absolutely despise accuracy and evasion tactics. In Wellspring Cave, we have a double battle against some Team Plasma Grunts. Charon utterly destroys them for us, and we catch a rock and roller named William, who helps a ton in the end fight, completely walling p -Dub. Afterwards, I catch an Audino named Stevens from some shaking grass, then we can face Lenora. Despite a pretty significant level disadvantage, William is able to take hits pretty well thanks to Harden and Leech Seed healing. 
When Herdier goes down, William is back to full health, but I decide it's not worth taking a hit on anyone else, so I let him go down. Gandhi lands a leech seed, and from there it's pretty much over. Sure, Lenora takes out Freeman, but once Thomas hits a few charms, Watchog can't deal enough damage to take out anyone else. After some Team Plasma shenanigans and the most breathtaking bridge crossing 2010 had to offer, we catch a Scraggy named Mott, and Mason evolves into Watchog. Then, Berg invites us to challenge him, so we do just that. His Whirlipede can deal moderate damage to Gandhi with Poison Tail, but Stevens can lower his attack with Growl so that Gandhi can come back in and use Captivate to lower his special attack. Berg burns two Hyper Potions here, but that just means he won't use them on his real threats. Dwebble is also pretty easy, even if sand attacks make landing Captivates super annoying. He goes down after taking Gandhi to about a third of his remaining health. Levani is where the fight gets hard. Since he's Grass-type, Leech Seed won't work. I have Gandhi start to lower his defense with Leer, then switch to Thomas and do the same. Mott comes in for her debut battle and lands a Swagger after taking a hard Razor Leaf, going down to the follow-up. Levani finally hits himself in confusion, nearly going down, but snaps out of it on the next turn. I sacrifice William to get a safe switch to Mason, who confuses Levani, then uses Detect as he takes himself out. With our third badge acquired, it's time for the only time we ever fight Bianca, Charon, and N between badges. Not counting the tutorial battles, of course. Bianca's a sweep with Leech Seed. The only trouble we had was Muna wasting our time by using Yawn and healing with Moonlight. Charon's team is also mostly a sweep, though Pantsage does need to take himself out with Confusion. Most of N's team fall to Leech Seed, but his Sigilyph has Magic Guard, which prevents all indirect damage. Confusion damage still works, so like Charon's Pantsage and Berg's Levani, we just have to confuse him and have him knock himself out. Easier said than done though, since Sigilyph is pretty bulky and has a low attack stat, meaning this is a rather slow process. It's only after I barely defeat N that I remember to pick up a few items from Castelia City, including the incredibly useful Eviolite and the TM for Rest. On Route 4, we catch a Sand Dial named Angelina, whose ground typing will be a massive help against Elisa and her electric types. All of her Pokémon know Volt Switch, which, you guessed it, switches her Pokémon out after attacking. This removes Leech Seed, and we can't have this. I make sure to switch in Angelina every time I think Elisa will use Volt Switch. Since Angelina is immune to Volt Switch, it does no damage, but more importantly, removes the switching effect. We can take out her first flying Pikachu, although Angelina goes down to a rogue critical pursuit. The second flying Pikachu comes out, and I switch to Stevens on an Aerial Ace, then tank a Volt Switch to send out Gandhi against Substrika. Substrika has a higher attack than Special Attack, so he'll almost never go for Volt Switch, and we can safely land a Leech Seed and stun him down. He does eventually use it against Mason, though, so we get a free Confuse Ray on Amolka. It doesn't work, and she Volt Switches back to Zebstrika. Mason goes down, and I send Gandhi back out to land another Leech Seed. I use Captivate this time, lowering Zebstrika's special attack and making him much less likely to use Volt Switch. Once he goes down, Steven levels up and learns Entrainment, which is a move that replaces the target's ability with the user's. This would have been super useful for suppressing Magic Guard earlier. Anyway, all that's left is her Amolga, who can't even make full use of Volt Switch anymore, so Leech Seed takes her out. Outside of the city, Charon challenges us again. He's still a pushover though, so Lipard and Tranquil are nothing special and go down to Leech Seed. Pig Knight takes Gandhi out with a Flame Charge since we missed our first Leech Seed, and Panthage still needs to be taken out with Confusion Damage, but it's nothing we can't handle. Once we get to Driftvale City, Clay gets all mad at us for letting Team Plasma escape. Not like you could have guarded the bridge or anything, Clay. We find them hiding in the cold storage and easily dispatch them. This pleases Clay, who permits us to challenge his gym. I'm sorry, Clay. I didn't realize we needed to fight off literal organized crime in order for you to do your job. Whatever. Crocorock lets us get a free leech seed off as he just uses Swagger. Then it's off to Mott on a quad-resisted crunch that doesn't even deal enough damage to outdo leech seed healing. We trade off torments, preventing either of us from using the same move twice in a row, but I switch to Stevens on a Swagger. I start to lower Crocorock's attack, but he uses Torment again, so I switch to Angelina for an Intimidate as Clay heals, then back to Stevens. Rinse and repeat until I mess up and switch in Angelina on a Bulldoze, which takes her out. Stevens can stall some more, and I switch in Gandhi when Crocorock faints, allowing her to leap seat Excadrill immediately. He starts to use Hone Claws, which is kinda terrifying, so Gandhi uses Torment to at least somewhat mitigate his ability to set up. 
Surprisingly, he only manages to take out Mott with a critical slash before going down. Last is Palpitoad, and as annoying as Aqua Ring's passive healing is, Leech Seed does more damage and Gandhi resists all of his moves, so he isn't much of an issue. Before we can move on, we have another rival fight, this time with Bianca. The only notable thing is her Muna has evolved into Musharna, but it no longer has the ability to heal with Moonlight or put us to sleep with Yawn, so the fight is actually easier this time around. Winning against Bianca lets us go to Chargestone Cave, where I catch a Pharaoh Seed named Abby, then run into N, who challenges us to a battle. His Bulldor and Joltik both go down to Leech Seed without doing much. He has his own Pharaoh Seed though, which takes himself out thanks to Abby's Iron Barbs and Rocky Helmet, each of which do damage when a Pokemon damages her with a contact move. Clink manages to take out Angelina with a critical gear grind, but goes down soon after. Not much else happens before we need to take on Skyla. I do catch a Litwick named Harriet in the Celestial Tower, but she won't join the party until later. Skyla herself isn't too bad. Stevens starts off by lowering Swoobat's attack, since she can only deal physical damage. Once she's at minus 6 attack, we can safely switch to Gandhi and land a Leech Seed. Skyla then proceeds to pull a Berg, and wastes both her Hyper Potions on a Pokemon who can't do a thing due to stat drops. Iron Barbs takes her out, since all of her damaging moves make contact. Unpheasant is a bit trickier, since she has special moves, but Angelina's Sacrifice gives us a safe switch to Mason, allowing us to land a Confuse Ray, then switch to Gandhi on a Leer. The next turn, she hits herself, giving us a free Leech Seed. At this point, Unpheasant goes down, since between Leech Seed healing and Steven's busted Regenerator ability, she can't do any real damage. Swana can deal big damage with Bubble Beam and Air Slash, and has passive healing with Aqua Ring. Stevens can shut her down by repeatedly healing with rest though, so we win eventually. With our new badge, we can head through Twist Mountain to get to Icarus City, but not before Charon challenges us again. He isn't easy anymore, and has equipped his Pokemon with competitive level items. His lead Unpheasant with Super Luck and a Scope Lens has a 1 in 4 chance to crit on any attack. Fortunately, we can use Entrainment to replace his ability, reducing this to a 1 in 8 chance. We can also risk Gandhi to lower his special attack with Captivate, severely hindering his ability to deal damage. Barring a crit, of course. This allows Stevens to do his thing and tank hits until a Pheasant goes down. Stevens' normal typing baits in Pignite, even though he doesn't know a fighting type move. After lowering his attack, Pignite nearly KOs Stevens with a critical takedown, so I switch to Abby on what ends up being Smog. Thinking Pignite will use Heat Crash, I pivot through William to ultimately send in Gandhi, but Pignite refuses to use it, even though it would certainly take out both Abby and Gandhi. Oh well, better for us. Leech Seed out damages Leftover's healing, so it's not long before Pignite goes down. Lightbird only knows contact moves, all of which are resisted by Abby, so Iron Barbs and Rocky Helmet take care of him easily. Simisage's Seed Bomb can deal crazy amounts of damage with his Miracle Seed but with the help of Growl and Torment, we can switch Abby in when he's forced to use Fury Swipes. Since it hits multiple times and Abby damages him for every hit, he doesn't last very long, and victory is ours. On the way through Twist Mountain, Gandhi evolves into Superior, and Angelina evolves into Krokorok. Icarus City is home to the Ice-type gym leader, Bryson. His signature TM move is Frost Breath, which always crits. This is a massive problem, since crits bypass any lowered stats on his Pokémon and any raised stats on ours. His Vanillish likes to use Mirror Shot, though, even though Frost Breath always does more damage. It lets us get a free Leech Seed and Torment off before switching to Harriet on a resistant Frost Breath. After a Captivate, Stevens can shrug off Vanillish's attacks quite well, even despite the crits. Bear Tick hits a weak Brine as we switch to Gandhi, then just uses Swagger as we land a Leech Seed. Stevens can wall him well enough, especially after using Growl. Unless Bear Tick lands a critical Icicle Crash for the knockout. Oh well. Swapping between Gandhi and William can mitigate his damage output until he faints, especially with Gandhi's Yachi Berry weakening an already weak Icicle Crash. With Gandhi still out, we can land a Leech Seed on Cryogonal, expecting to go down to a Frost Breath, but it uses Reflect instead. Harriet comes in on an Aurora Beam, then tanks another to burn Cryogonal with Will-O-Wisp for more chip. Since it's only capable of dealing Ice-type damage to Harriet, she can wall it until it goes down. Between Icarus and Opelucid, there are about four truckloads of plot to get through, as well as a fight with Bianca. Stoutland doesn't do much of anything before going down and sending in Simisir, who could absolutely destroy Gandhi with Flame Burst, but the dunce just uses Leer. Harriet can disable his Flame Burst with Imprison, easily allowing Leech Seed to take him out. 
All of Samurott's moves are physical and make contact, so it should be an easy KO with Abby's Wombo Combo. However, thanks to a rogue critical revenge, we need Gandhi's Leech Seed to finish the job, especially after I try, and fail, to use Mason to inflict confusion. Musharna is as easy as ever, with Stevens walling her quite effectively, even through confusion. After another truckload of plot, I grab the cover fossil from the Relic Castle and revive it into a Tertuga named Charles. He won't be joining us for the fight against Iris though, since Stevens is just that good of a wall that pretty much nothing can take him down once he lands a few growls. Not even Dragon Rages from Fracture phase him, and they always do 40 damage. Drodigan's gimmick in this battle is his rough skin ability, which functions identically to Abby's Iron Barbs. Unfortunately for Iris, status moves don't make contact, so we can't even trigger it if we wanted to, and Drodigan goes down without much trouble. Haxorus is last, and even with two Dragon Dances, she can barely touch William and his absurd defense, so she goes down easily as well. Once the team is leveled up to level 40, in the process of evolving Angelina, Charles, and Abby, we can take on Charon for the final time. After removing Unfest's super luck ability with Entrainment, we can switch to Harriet as he charges up a Razor Wind, then get a Will-O-Wisp off for free since Harriet is immune to the actual attack. Switching between Stevens and Harriet ensures that we take no damage until Lifeguard comes out and takes himself out against Abby thanks to our usual strategy. Embor is now a mixed attacker and isn't so easily countered with Growl and Intimidate. Fortunately, Gandhi is bulky enough to survive a non-critical flamethrower, so I sack Angelina to get a safe switch and land Leech Seed. I tried to get Cheeky and bait him into using Takedown against Abby for some more chip. It didn't work, so now both Gandhi and Abby are down and we still have to deal with Simisage. Harriet can always burn him with Will-O-Wisp though, and Stevens can tank while healing with Regenerator for the win. Before we take on the League, Harriet evolves into Lampin, and I go back to Route 9 and catch a Garboder named Martin. Then head to the Move Reminder to teach him Toxic Spice. While that's happening, allow me to remind you to like and subscribe. Pretty please? Oh, and if you haven't figured out the nickname theme yet, it's Civil Rights Leaders. Thanks to SandyR5407 for the suggestion. First up is Grimsley and his Dark Types. He's generally considered the easiest Elite Four member since his team is so frail that it'll fall over to any remotely hard hit. That doesn't really apply here though. Gandhi lands a Leech Seed on Scrafty after tanking a Poison Jab, then we can switch to Abby on another Poison Jab to take no damage. Angelina and Harriet can swap to effectively wall Scrafty until he's at minimum attack. Martin can then come in and set up two layers of Toxic Spikes and three Stockpiles before Scrafty faints. Crocodile comes in and rocks Martin with two Earthquakes before he uses Swallow to restore all of his health. Gandhi comes in and can barely wall Crocodile until Poison finishes him off. Bisharp comes in and his Steel Typing makes him immune to Poison, but Abby can always take him out since all of his moves make contact. Thanks to Iron Defense and Ingrain, Abby can wall Lifeheart as well, winning us the battle against Grimsley. I choose to fight Marshall next, even though half our team is weak to fighting. Throw is rather insistent on using weak bulldozes to lower Gandhi's speed, which lets her use Leech Seed and Torment. After minimizing Throw's attack, I switch to Martin on a weak Storm Throw that always crits. Then set up two layers of Toxic Spikes as Marshall uses his second Full Restore. Throw can't deal more damage than Martin is healing, especially once he raises his defense with Stockpile. Martin is able to outlast Sock, but Conkelder deals too much damage, and I pivot through Angelina for Intimidate. Harriet is then able to outlast both Conkelder and Manshao with the help of Stevens. Halfway through the Elite Four is where things get tough. Chantal and Caitlyn both have special attacking teams, and our only way to lower special attack is with Captivate, but all of their Pokémon are also female. Turns out, maybe I should have waited to get lucky against Chili instead of taking the easy way out. Now it's time to get lucky against Chantal. After tanking a Shadow Ball and dodging a Will-O-Wisp, Gandhi can seed and torment Kofa Grigus, letting Stevens wall her. I switch to Martin on a Grass Knot, then set up Toxic Spikes as Chantal heals. I set up the second layer of Toxic Spikes, expecting to go down to a Psychic, but Kofa Grigus just uses Will-O-Wisp. I switch to Angelina on a Psychic, then back to Stevens to resume walling. When I think Chantal is about to use her second Full Restore, I switch to Harriet on a Grass Knot, then use Curse on what should be the heal but I was too early and Harriet goes down to a Shadow Ball. Martin comes in and gets a free Amnesia off as Chantal heals. Amnesia lets Martin tank quite a few Psychics, despite his weakness, and Kofa Grigus goes down to Curse. Golurk knows Earthquake, which is unaffected by Amnesia, but Martin survives! Then goes down to Burn Damage. Bummer. 
Stevens can always wall goal or can tell Poison takes some action. Chandelure hits like a freight train with Fire Blast, especially when it crits to take out Stevens from nearly full health. Angelina lands a Swagger to no avail, but lives to use Rest, allowing Poison to do damage for two more turns. Gandhi lands a Torment before going down, meaning Abby can tank a resistant Psychic while Poison takes out Chandelure. Chantal still has Jellicent in the back though, but her strongest move is Surf, which doesn't do very much damage, even on a crit, and Abby can always rest back to full health. Last of the Elite Four is Caitlyn and her Psychic type. Well, we have the tools to deal with Magic Guard now, but the issue is executing it. Reuniclus deals massive damage, so even if we got a simple beam up, Stevens would go down, and we need him for the rest of the fight. That's what immunities are for, though. We stole out all of Reuniclus' moves, except for Thunder, forcing her to struggle every other turn via Torment. Martin comes in and only manages to set up one layer of Toxic Spikes before Reuniclus faints, sending out with Sharna. He sets up the second layer, and manages to last surprisingly long before switching out. Once Musharna gets low, though, Caitlyn uses her last full restore, curing the poison, so I have to send in Gandhi for Leech Seed. Given how much damage we've taken so far, I try something that might seem a little bit weird. I have Stevens use Heal Pulse on Musharna, healing her for half her health. This lets me switch in other members of the team to get more healing from Leech Seed. This is a tad risky, though, since Charge Beam has a chance of raising her special attack, but eventually she's left with just Reflect and can't do any damage. By the time she goes down, everyone on the team other than Martin is back to full health. Sigilyph ignores the Toxic Spikes and has Wonderskin, which gives all status moves 50% accuracy when used against her. Man, Sigilyphs are just a pain to deal with this run. Thankfully, with enough luck, Stevens can land a Simple Beam to negate this, then Gandhi can do her Leech Seed magic. Soon enough, the annoying Psychic Bird goes down, and Gothitelle comes out. She does trigger the Toxic Spikes and is walled by Stevens and Angelina, so Caitlyn is down and we can head to the final battle. Well, technically there's two. The first one is against N, and he is a Reshiram now. The game forces you to catch a Zekrom, and expects you to use it against him, but I don't use legendaries because I'm lame. Because Reshiram outspeeds everything on our team, we need to get creative. I lead with Harriet, who tanks a Fusion Flare, then uses Curse. With Harriet low, Reshiram will pick from his moves randomly. I switch to Angelina on what ends up being an extra sensory, so she takes no damage. Angelina is bulky enough to survive a Fusion Flare and use Embargo to prevent N from healing with a full restore. Reshiram will again pick from a random move, so I switch to Stevens on the incoming Hyper Beam. I use the free turn Reshiram spends recharging to switch to Martin. This baits in Kling Clang, who just goes for Metal Sound as Martin sets up the Toxic Spikes, and keeps using Metal Sound as I switch to Gandhi for Leech Seed. When it finally decides to attack, I switch to Abby since she resists all of its moves. The Hyper Beam that comes out does very little and allows Harriet to come back to heal a bit before tagging out to Angelina on a Thunderbolt. By repeating this, I can get Angelina back to full health and heal Harriet a little bit before Kling Clang goes down. Caracosta is efficiently walled by Abby and Zoroark by Stevens and Harriet. Archeops activates Harriet's flame body as she sacrifices herself, cutting his attack in half. Angelina comes out for Intimidate, only to switch to Abby on an Acrobatics. This takes Archeops below half health, activating his Defeatist ability, cutting his attack in half again. At this point, another switch to Angelina is just for safety, as Abby takes Archeops down the next turn. Vanillix can do some serious damage with Blizzard, if it was able to hit one. By the time he sets up the hail for perfect accuracy though, it's too late and he goes down to poison as Abby gets taken out. Immediately after finishing the fight with N, Getsis challenges us. We can't even switch our team around. Or, that would be the case, but because I'm bad at this game, I actually lost my first attempt against him. This allows me to swap my team around, so I lead Angelina for round 2. Swapping between Angelina, Martin, and Stevens, we can stall Kofagrigus out of power points, allowing Martin to safely set up both layers of Toxic Spikes, even though I can't count and switch him in on a Shadow Ball. Twice. Unlike essentially every major fight this late into the game, Getsis only has one full restore, for some reason. Given Kofagrigus can't even deal more damage than Black Sludge can recover, I take the opportunity to set up stockpiles and amnesias for whatever comes our way. Bufalon is pretty scary with head charge, but thanks to a timely swallow, Martin survives, then switches to Abby so Bufalon takes himself out. Hydreigon is easily Getsis' biggest threat, and Fire Blast would absolutely melt Abby, so I pivot through Harriet to send Gandhi out on a Dragon Pulse. Since she's so fast, she can land a Leech Seed before going down. Stevens and Harriet can pivot through each other to eventually wear the dragon down, sending in Seismitoad. He can barely do a thing to Steve.
Well, at least he goes down without taking anybody out. Bisharp is steel type, so he can't be poisoned. Good thing his moveset makes him an easy target for Abby. Electros takes out both Abby and Stevens, but this allows Harriet to get a mostly safe curse off. Even if she went down here, it wouldn't have been a problem since Angelina knows rest to heal back to full health. This was a really fun run! If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you didn't enjoy it, let me know by disliking the video. Comments are always appreciated as well, since they let the algorithm know I'm engaging. As always, thank you so much for watching. Peace out.